to this video. Um, in this video, I will be talking about uh, how to optimize uh, isometric procedural row generator. So previously, we generate the tile based on the game object. So each tile has its own game object associated with it. Um, what what we don't want to do is that because there are so many game objects in the in the scene, it will cause the performance issue. So what we need to do is having one big plain game object and then we can put the sprite on top of it for each uh for each tile. So each tile should not be a game object, it should be a sprite. So in this example we um we will be using a tile map by the inside the Unity. So this should be the result. Right. So here we have a isometric uh, generated using procedural uh, generator. So using the noise. And so what what is different from the previous video and this video? In this video, we only have one game object. Right. That handles all the tiles. See, there are many tiles here. And as you can see, the FPS is still 700. I just keep. It's not gonna cause many or much performance since we already have one game object. And then basically that is just a sprite. And so, it is much efficient to generate a large chunk of tiles using this method than the method that I previously talked about. So let's jump into the code um, so it's similar to the previous solution so what we have here just here and then each tile so we have default sand and water which is just the reference to the tile which is in the uh, here so using the um, unity tile map so if you go to, I believe it is here, Windows 2D and then pick a tile pillar. If you want to, you can uh, manually uh, paint the tile for each section, uh, for each tile. So that will, like that, that, which is which works perfectly fine with you, uh, fit with the project. Um, but we want to, you know, pro uh, programmatically or procedurally generate the tile, so we won't be doing that. And so, anyway, so we use the tile map, which has tile map component, tile map uh, renderer, and then that would be the grid. So just the default uh, component. And then here is just the reference for each tile, so water, sand, and default tile map is for that, reference for that, to that. Um, okay, that's the generator. So this will be just keep generate a negative 50 to negative 50, uh, negative 50 at negative 50, negative 50, and then the size. So let's jump into that, so size 50. So the next would be so if you negative 50 plus 50 is 0, so 0 there. And then the y, we want the same y. So you just keep generating each section, each chunk. So every 3 seconds it would generate, and then it would generate, and then it would generate. Right? And so it's just that. Um, so every 3 seconds you generate until 200. Um, and since we are using chunk, so it's going to be every 50. So inside the generate add function, uh, we have I enumerator, so this will generate per frame. So this would return every frame, it would generate all the y's. And so here we have a flow, uh, float and x would be the um, floating value for the x of the per noise. So the noise will be in this case the same thing. Uh, we'll be using a print noise, using the the x value of the tile divided by the size. So this would condense 
down the points as I previously talked about in the other video then in y the same so x divided by the side which is 50 and y divided by size in which is each chunk um, and then create a new tile at so giving the x and y the set index is just the set position right now we just set it to equal to zero and the noise would be the noise given by the uh, print noise so here create add create a new tile at x y set and then the noise so here we will be referring to the tile map using the method set tile we want the position that it will be so in the example we'll be using the vector tree int using the x y and z uh, since we are using int we can change to int in we don't need to float and then we just remove all of that we don't need this uh, remove that just x y and z and that should be it so and then the tile that it wants so if the noise is just in 0 0.2 it's gonna be water then 0.3 sand, and then other than that, it's gonna be default. Simple enough. Um, again, this method should be used in production environment. Um, it is much optimized than the previous video I talked about. In the previous uh, video, uh, I show you the example just to get the concept. But if you were to build a, a game, a world map, this method should be considered. Um, since it is much better, uh, you don't need game object for each uh, each sprite. You just make one game object that contains all the sprite, all the chunks. Um, and if let's say, for example, if you say if you want um, let's say if you have a building on top of some kind of environment, an interactive environment, you can set or make a new um, tile map which could be on top of this using either the order layer here or just by the set value of the tile map basically that would work fine I, I think but anyways that's that um, this should be used in uh, I guess if you were to create some kind of world some kind of um, uh, isometric world this should be perfect solution for that um, this also works for a top view uh, video game so here currently we set uh, where is it oh here set layout so it's uh, isometric it's fine here if you were to use hexagon you can use that which oh looks pretty good but it was going to be hexagon um, rectangle will be just the normal, you know, the top view 3D down, the top view down basically. But isometric if you were to make this kind of game play. Also, just to note that um, for the for this to be rendered properly, so what I have here now is the render sorted by top right. So looking from top right down, it should look like that. If you were to change into top left or bottom left it would look weird um oh okay so i guess not this case oh right um since this is sorted by the y-axis so if you go up to unity um edit uh project setting you can see I have different uh, setting here. Uh, by default, it will look like that, which is so ugly. We have no idea what that is and what's for. But if you were to change that, it would be you know rendered differently than what we have. So if you want to render, I guess top right like that, you can have it like that. But we don't. Well, in our case, it's different. So we want to render by the custom axis which is the y and so you can play around to see what kind of 
uh, outcome do you like? And perspective just you know, not working at all. Default and custom axis. So far, in our case, it would be custom axis. Let's say if you want to have some kind of depth on top of that, I think it would be the best if you set different layer for different set axis then you can differentiate from there let's say you want water to be a bit down you can you know play around with this sorting order uh, sorting yeah sort order and then see how you like the game to be um, again here you can change to auto graphic which is the 2d and here say it change one to zero yeah, I guess you can play around with the value, get the outcome you like. And then top right, yeah, like that. And then, yeah, you can see, that would be the thing. Anyways, I hope, uh, I hope the, this video is helpful. Um, if you, if you enjoy, please give a thumb up. And uh, I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.